<laughs> Hello again, fellow Yaucha brothers and sisters, and this is Return of the Earth Defenders, chapter six through seven, maybe. I don't know. Not anyway, I literally have like a lot of time in my hands, and I decided. Why not do another chapter since all of you were pretty very demanding for seeing Return of the Earth Defenders. So, without further ado, let's jump into chapter six, uh, chapter six shall we? Mm -mm -mm. Chapter six. So you guys can't like see, literally see the page. I'm, I'm just going to just scroll down. You're mostly going to see my reaction, but... You're gonna have to, like, listen really to the audio and use your imagination to get the idea of the pictures of what's going on. So... <laughs> Chapter 6, Mutant Sewer Rats. Mm. The small, curious rats sniffed around in the trash like sewer. Despite it being a sewer, sewer the water was strangely clean. Okay, yeah, that's interesting. This would not do. The rat was hungry. Very hungry. More of his friends joined him looking for food along the long tunnel in the sewers. They stopped at a strange glowing goop that mixed with the sewer's waters. Curious, they sniffed the odd goop. It didn't smell too bad, but it looked delish delicious. The rats dove into the green go goop hungrily. As they finished their meals, they began to change. Their eyes went from a creepy black to a glowing, lifeless blood red. Okay, that's freaky. Their height began to grow as they changed to a height of five feet. <laughs> oh, I've, oh, I've got that weird chill on my my back. Mm -hmm. They they grew long, dirty toenail claws that were green and covered with sewage filth. Oh, ew, ew, ew. Their worm-like tails now had hair on them. Their coats were still black and thick. Their tongues were long and forked like that of dragons. Creepy. They shape-shifted into a green goo and slithered toward their intended target. Thanks, pal. Have a good night, Angira said as he paid the pizza guy, who oddly didn't question his outfit, but just wanted to pay the guy and just go home. Angira smiled as he took the pepperoni pizza down into the sewers. He was very careful not to drop it. As he went down the long tunnels when he heard Baragons in weak and creepy voice, Angurus. Like, that's not freaky at all. Angurus spotted Baragon, but knew that something was wrong. First off, Baragon never talked like that. Unless he was trying to prank him. Second, why was Baragon coming in green mutant goo? And thirdly, why wasn't he showing his face or the rest of him? There was only one way to find out if that was Baragon. Hey Baragon, I got the pizza you I got the pizza you ordered, remember? Angira said. What pizza? the voice asked. He then tossed the pizza aside and ready out and pulled out his claws. You're not Baragon, what are you? Angira asked. The mutant rat shape shifted into its mutated state, then tackled Angira to the ground, chomping vigorously at his arm. Get off me, you moron! Angurus growled as he pushed the rat off of him. The rat recoiled and leaped into the air for another attack as it bit into his arm, chomping vigorously at his arm. I said, get off! He roared as his claws dug into the rat's underbelly, gutting in his blood poured out. The rat ladder. The rat. <laughs> the rat let out a screech as Angurus kicked it kicked it into an explosive barrel, killing the rat instantly as the barrel detonated. Boom! <laughs> Angurus let out a relieved sigh. He picked up the pizza which had blood covering the box. He checked the pizza, untouched and uncontaminated, and still edible. 
He wiped the fresh blood off the pizza box. Disgusting. You guys bleed worse than the than the other kaijus. It's cringe and disgust. He took the box back to the base, muttering under his breath, I hate rats. Five asterisks later, and why is my computer being stupid? Hey guys, pizza's here, Angura said as he entered the room with the pizza in hand. Pizza's here, Baragon said excitedly. As he ran toward Anguirus, as he picked up the box, he rushed to the kitchen. The others followed with Baragon. Get the plates, Baragon, Godzilla ordered. Baragon got the plates as requested. <laughs> I think I've been going kind of fast with these, so I'll try to slow down for all of you. They set up the plates as each of them had two slices of pizza on their plates. Mothra pulled out what looked like a bottle of ketchup from those fancy restaurants, except it contained a strange black liquid. G energy sauce, everyone? Mothra asked. All their eyes turned blank, glowing white as they answered in a much creepier voice. Sure. They said in, in unison. Wait, I need to fix that. There we go. As they squirted the smelly black organic radioactive liquid on their pizzas. The Earth Defenders sat in the couches and chairs as they devoured the pizza hungrily. Martha grinned with him enjoying the treat he created to go with the pizza. G Energy was the lifeblood of all kaijus, and it was also for their meal. While each of the kaijus did in fact, did, didn't in fact have intestines, it was, er, did in fact have in intestines, it was only used for one purpose, mating. Uh, oh my god. Uh, none of the kaijus ever needed to go to the bathroom or even use it at all because their stomachs were different than that of humans. When they ate, it only enhanced their powers, muscles, and veins. But they couldn't eat too much G energy at a time. It would result in a rapid growth, spurt to a size of 300 feet tall which led to a nuclear destabilization, which could destroy the world in one big bang. This went double for Godzilla since he was the most powerful and undefeated kaiju of them all. Luckily, he was able to control his super form after his second transformation. But still, he had to eat less G energy, otherwise his explosion which would be much w worse. They all had a small burp as they finished their meal. They finally drank their cans of soda and crushed the cans with their claws or whatever Mothra had. Seriously, like, I don't know what those th things on like an insect are for like Mothra. I, I don't know, even know what to call them. Let me know in the comments se section below. Well, that was a good meal, Godzilla said. Indeed, Anguirus agreed. I'm going to check the box to see if there was any more pizza, Aragon said. Okay, the others, the others replied as they began to watch TV. They hold up, Bleah! and heard the empty pizza box clap the floor. They all went to the kitchen to find Baragon covering his rept reptilian nose. Are you okay? Godzilla asked. What died on the pizza box? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's <is> funny. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> Something literally bad on the pizza box. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Gone gagged. Oh, yeah. I completely forgot about that bleeder, Hingira said. What bleeder? Martha asked. As I was on my way to deliver the pizza, I heard, or what I thought I heard, Baragon greet me, Ingira said. How was it me? I was here th time waiting for the pizza, Baragon asked. Exactly. To make things worse, it had your voice. But its voice was off. Second, it was in the shadows, not greeting like you usually do. And it was covered in green mu ooze, Ingira explained. 
Ew, Baragon crunched in disgust. When I knew it wasn't Baragon, it attacked me, Angiris continued. What was it? Uh, what was it, Godzilla asked. A five foot tall shape shifting mutant sewer at Angiris answered. Ew, the others cringe. Oh, heck no! Oh, oh. <laughs> Baragon commented. <laughs> Had to put it. <laughs> I don't know if I could survive the rest of this. Ah, <laughs> uh, limited. The thing trying to. The thing tried to bite my arm off, but I stabbed it in the underbelly and kicked him into an explosive barrel. Angiris finished. Angiris finished. <clears throat> Good riddance, Rowan grumbled. Wait a minute. Rats don't travel alone, Mothra realized. You don't think that's more of them, do you? Godzilla asked. The minute he said that, the lights in the TV were turned off leaving them in complete blackness. Ah, oh, great, now the lights are out, Angiris groaned. Baragon, did you trip on a cord? Ronan asked. No, I haven't moved an inch since the lights went out. Martha, can you turn the light back on? Godzilla asked. Sure thing, a deep voice replied. Wait a minute, Godzilla said. A lot said out loud. A slicing sound was heard. Immediately, the lights turned back on. Godzilla's left sharp claws were buried into a shape-shifting shape rat's brain as its hands were removed from Mothra's mouth and the rest of his body. The deceased mutant rat collapsed to the ground dead. How did you know that it wasn't Mothra? Baragon asked. I've spent many years with Mothra. I know what his voice sounds like. Godzilla answered. Now what? Angiris asked. Mothra, remember the second time you and I fought and used stealth to evade those submarines? Godzilla asked. Yeah, I remember. Mothra answers. Think we could pull off the same stitch? Pull the same stitch off again with the others? Godzilla asked. They've studied under us for a long time. I think they can pull it off. Mothra replied. Good. Godzilla answered. I know what you're thinking, and I like it, Angiris grinned. Suddenly, the lights turned off. Now, Godzilla shouted. Faint whooshes were heard. Then there was dead silence. The lights turned back on, turned back, turned back on again. The rats sniffed the ground in confusion. They arched their mutant backs to get a better scent. Nothing. The rats growled as they found their deceased brother who came first. The lights went out. A loud screech was heard on the ceiling. The lights turned on again. Blood rained from the ceiling as a headless mutant rat fell to the ground. The rats hissed, looking for the killer, but saw nothing. Deep in the shadows, Godzilla fire, Godzilla's fire-blank eyes opened as he silently crawled on the ceiling towards his opponents, his claws digging into the metal. He then dropped down behind the rats without making a single sound. He grabbed the first rat from behind and snapped its neck. The other two turned around as one got his face blown off by Godzilla's radioactive fire. Boom! Boom! The second rat pounced, but got a tail to the gut from Godzilla, making him crash into the wall. Godzilla approached the stunned rat, who shook, who shook off the attack, stood back up, and began to sidestep. Godzilla followed his attacker. You want to dance, tough guy? Godzilla asked. The rat hissed as his, op his opponent as he prepared for another attack. The rat charged, then leaped at Godzilla. Godzilla grabbed the rat by his disgusting mutant face face, punching it in the gut five times. Then with one hand, 
slammed the rat into the ground. The rat screeched and hissed. Godzilla roared and crushed the creature's skull and face with his foot, leaving its face a sticky pile of mush. Damn, he just... <laughs> like that. <laughs> the others came out of hiding and looked at the rat. So, is that it? Ronan asked. Godzilla looked straight up into the air, closed his eyes, and sniffed the air. No, there's two more. But right now they're too scared to come out, Godzilla told him. How do we find them? Angerist asked. I'll sniff them out. Godzilla said. He then sniffed his way to Ronan's room. He sniffed the air again. It had to be here. He then stopped at Rodan's bed. Are you under the bed? Godzilla asked teasingly as he kicked the bed. A terrified screech came from came under it as the rat began to panic and slip. Oh, you're not getting away that easily, Godzilla mischievous. Godzilla said mischievously as they saw the rat climb out from the bed and duck into Rodan's closet. I feel bad for this rat. He's dumber than Baragon. And Garrus grinned. Hey! Baragon said angrily. Enough games, Rodan growled. He p Oh, sorry. Enough games, Rodan growled. He pulled the mutant rat out and sliced his bottom half off, causing the creature to bleed from its top half. Now, what about the last one? And Garrus asked. This one we have to capture alive to see what mutated him and deliver him to the new Kaiju examination base, Godzilla told them. In Tokyo? Baragon asked. No, in Manhattan, Godzilla, asked. Godzilla answered. How do they have a... How do they have a big building like that and have the American government have no clue what it is, Angiris asked. You would be surprised how much the politicians can hide, hide a pur true purpose of a new building, Godzilla told them. Well then, let's go find this rat, Angiris said eagerly. They both left the room as Godzilla continued to sniff the final rat, the final rat out. Bleh. He's close, Godzilla said. Baragon began to look around with the others. Then he noticed a small ventilation system. The entrance had been removed. Violently. He crouched and sniffed the entrance. Gotcha, Baragon thought to himself. He reached his claw and grabbed something soft. He heard a screech as it tried to wiggle free. Stop squirming! Sorry about that, guys. Part of the drama. <laughs> Growled as he grabbed the creature out and threw it into the armchair. Blood poured out of the rat's forehead as it looked up surrounded by the earth defenders. You're coming with us, Godzilla growled. As they took the creature to the surface, the earth defenders leapt from rooftop to rooftop, bonking the creature's head on the roofs along the way out. <laughs> that had to hurt. <laughs> Finally, they reached the giant skyscraper light building. Wow. I have to admit, they hide it very well, Ingira said. They both looked around. No civilians were watching them. They both entered the building. A young black-haired attendant looked up from her desk, shoving the glasses further to her head. Ah, you must be the Earth Defenders. What private matters can I help you with? <laughs> She asked. She leaned from the desk looking at them. She wore a tight skirt that revealed her long legs that went down to her thighs. Oh no. She had a shirt that revealed some of her chest area but still up her breasts. <laughs> oh lord. Oh no. Oh no 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 no. Godzilla could tell that the work outfit was annoying, was annoying the stuff out of her, but she was able to tolerate just as much. 
Aren't you guys supposed to be relaxing in your new headquarters? The desk attendant asked. I guess there's no rest for the weary. Not with this creature running around, Godzilla said as he threw the tied-up mutant rat to the floor, hissing frantically in hate at the Earth Defenders. The attendant jumped back in surprise and disgust. She opened a private door with the key she had, which revealed a private PA system. Click a PA system. She clicked the button on the side, which opened the giant sign behind her, revealing a secret room. Kaiju cleanup crew at main entrance. New inmate presented by Kaijus. Thanks, she said, putting the phone down. Footsteps of two guards were heard coming up the steps, along with a thorough metallic stomping. <clears throat> Tide 3 Kuryu emerged from the stairs, aided by two guards holding, holding electric prods. So what kaiju do you have for me, Godzilla? Tide 3 Kuryu asked. A five foot mutant rat that can shape shift. You know what? I'm just gonna say Mecha Godzilla. This is the Mecha Godzilla 3, not the first Mecha Godzilla. Keep in mind. Good thing he can't disguise himself as something metal, Mecha Godzilla grinned. Just what do you have to say for me? Mecha Godzilla asked the rat. It let out a loud hiss that only made that only made Mecha Godzilla smile. How quaint, he grinned. The two guards electrified the creature, then placed a special bracelet around its neck, nullifying its powers. The Earth Defenders followed the prisoner, putting it in the laser kaiju cell. They slapped a translator on it. The rest of the Earth Defenders, not including Godzilla, had recently got their translators before they got they gotten the right here. So now they could talk to other people. So, Rat, why did you attack us? Godzilla asked. You do not belong in the sewers, nor do those human scum belong here. There, it's our domain, our land to buy, our home. We must spread, we must dominate. Now you have stopped my plans for ridding the human scum of our planet, and making this world of rats, the rats answered evilly. Why can't you just rule the earth like all the other sickos? Angiris groaned. You all murdered my brothers who wanted a better world, the rat growled evilly. Then you shouldn't have gotten in our way, Godzilla said. They turned to leave. The rat grabbed the bars furious, furiously, his body able to resist the harming lasers. I will destroy you when I get out of these bars, the creature shouted in rage. And that's going to be the end of chapter 6. I do finish the other chapters, but hey. So, for all today, we got from chapters 1, from the prologue, all the way to chapter 6. So, so I hope you're all enjoying this series. Do, 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 don't forget to drop a like or put a comment in the comment section below. So, things, since I literally have, like, a lot of time, this is getting a little, this is getting very serious. So, we've got our boys who just got shrunk down. They've, they, so, the Earth Defenders are still settling in Manhattan until, and my guess is they're not going to be in Manhattan forever, but they're going to go back to Tokyo whenever it's repaired. But for now, they're stuck in Manhattan. At least for right now. And then, somewhere along the future, there's going to be... I have a feeling there's going to be more involved. So, we have we have seen some of the Call of Duty stuff. We've seen something interesting happen. And so far, it looks like there's not much going around. And something tells me I can, and probably like tomorrow or next time, I think you can do both chapters 7 and 8. Whoo, boy, but yeah. Those, that was Return of the Earth Defenders, ladies and gentlemen. Alright, the first, that, those, this was chapter 6 of Return of the Earth Defenders that I read to you, so. 
please, I do hope all of you enjoyed. So, see ya.